Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Bruce Lebowski Studio out for a little plein air painting. It's beautiful here in Maine. It's 62 degrees, uh, probably about 3.30 in the afternoon. And I apologize for not posting videos for a very long time. I've had a lot going on in my life and I'll fill you in on that later. But for now, let's paint. So there's what I'm thinking of painting. Just do a little uh, tiny painting, get some shapes in there and see what uh, we can get into. And then I'll cover uh, what's been going on all this time. Here's what I got set up. Got my little Gorilla Box 9x12. Gonna be working on a toned uh, gray 8x10 panel oil priming. And we got uh, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Ivory Black, Titanium White, Ultramarine Blue, Cad Yellow Light, Cad Red. And a little bit of Liquin Original and some turps. So let's get rolling. I'm gonna map out the lights and darks and uh, get that nailed before the light changes too much. Okay, I'm gonna scrub in with a Tuscan Series Utrecht number two. It's pretty windy here right now, so if there's a little wind noise, forgive me, but we're gonna get rolling, see what happens. Let's get going. I'm just gonna use a little ivory black. I can't believe it. I'm finally back to some plain air painting. Wow, has it been a while. So excited to get out and uh, do this piece for you. I uh, just want to touch base right up front here and tell you a little bit uh, why you haven't seen any uh, videos recently. And that's because uh, I've been going through, I'm in the process of divorcing my wife. Uh, great person and everything. We just, uh, we're not compatible anymore. And you know, you drift apart over the years and I just had to move on. So now I'm living uh, with my girlfriend uh, in a different area and uh, a little more northern, about an hour north of Waterville. So I'm acclimating myself to a new region and relationship and all that sort of thing. So I've had a lot of uh, things on my plate to focus on that's a little more important. And uh, I didn't want to just be putting content out there just to have something on YouTube. So really want to you guys have been very supportive of my videos and I need to uh, you know want to step up my game and do something worthwhile so that's why it's taken so long I apologize uh, but finding a couple little scenes in the town that I'm living in uh, of course I've been poking around a lot in general acclimating myself finding new uh, subject matter and really studying it from different times of day and I drive by this house repeatedly on my way home from work and it just uh, really is just screams out to you to be painted so I said that's it I'm gonna jump in and do it and the original plan was to put some color to it as I painted you know sketch it out uh, some of my typical past videos and then put color to it but as I got going and, and just started working I just was really so getting involved in just doing a value study and uh, really finding uh, some shades of gray so to speak to really uh, get the, the subject down quickly, which I think is very effective. It worked out very well in this case. I also wanted to experiment with cropping the subject in a little bit of an unusual way with that uh, the foreground building, the main house part. And I thought it worked out kind of effectively. Uh, a lot of times uh, the people just put the whole subject in and I just thought I'd give it a little more, a uh, little bit of a contemporary edge, just a tad, and see what would happen and I was pretty happy with the end result. Now, of course, when I do my plein air work, and you've heard me say this a lot in a lot of videos, my expectation is not to finish something uh, necessarily on site. And, you know, if I get lucky and that happens, I'm, I'm uh, of course, super stoked about it, but it's not a requirement. I really like just getting outside and, and practicing my draftsmanship skills or color matching a tone. I don't go too crazy with pushing extreme colors. Uh, I really want Mother Nature to kind of teach me a thing or two, and that's what I strive for when I plain air paint most of the time. Doesn't mean it's not going to change down the road. Who knows? Can't read the future, but for now, uh, that's what I've uh, been doing. Now you can see a few seconds ago as I was mapping out that little porch in between the two buildings. Sometimes you get ahead of yourself, and I just thought, I really need to focus on establishing 
the shadow shapes and then I can suggest that porch later on which you'll see and that happens sometimes and I'm glad I caught myself ahead uh, occasionally when I get into the drawing I really want to get everything in there and you forget hey don't forget I'm making it a painting so don't go too uh, crazy in some instances and depending on scale that you're working this is an 8x10 panel if you're observing this video you can see a problem starting to develop which I'll address later on I'm not going to tell you what it is right this second but especially watching it back again uh, I can see wow I can't believe I totally missed that in, uh, in the, at this stage I should say but still again continuing on with some shadows one of the uh, angle shadows uh, to the right of the back barn building, sort of in a driveway area, was a little awkward to explain. Because what you're not seeing from my angle of view of the photo shows the subject quite well. But there's a bushy thing off to the right that I uh, deleted from the painting, but it's interrupting my visual information for the shadow that's cast by that barn building and uh, the continuance of the house to the right onto the ground. So I had to kind of uh, spend a little time later on and, and try to figure that out all, uh, from this photo. If I continue to work on the painting in the studio, I'll use that for reference, try to study more. And just getting some other slow process of, the hardest part about cutting off the subject, by the way, uh, like you see where I'm working there, is making sure that you're centering windows, you don't really have the other side of the house, but you can kind of, if you really were worried about it, you could use a piece of scrap paper, like a, a stiff type of paper, and uh, use that to continue drawing the house over to the right off scene. I mean, left off scene. That would help. You can see right off how this technique of just using a tone, uh, it's nothing new in plein air painting. People use burnt sand or whatever. But honestly, I really like this ivory black. I just, for me, and the way I paint, and for the naturalism I want in my painting, I don't go too saturated color and super bright or anything. This is really facilitating. I could see this being a new way of working to map out my paintings to start. So I wanted to just take a second, if you're new, watch my channel for the first time. Thanks for uh, checking it out. Hope you're liking what you're seeing. Uh, if you do, uh, I invite you to share it with your artist friends and. Uh, also, uh, I invite you to uh, subscribe so you can see more of my content in the future. Also, I wanted to share that uh, on my website, which is showing on the screen right now, you can visit there, and I'm now doing uh, offering prints on demand uh, for select paintings. So uh, if you want to check that out and uh, see what you think, love to hear your comments. And now let's continue with painting. Now you'll find that just starting with blocks of the gray, like I am with the porch right here, gosh, it just really facilitates getting the simple planes of an object, especially buildings, houses, and that sort of structural thing. And then you can overlay your darks, like right here, I'm trying to uh, put a little suggestion of that uh, door in, and you'll see me work on the windows and pull out the posts in a second. But uh, yeah, it's really kind of a nice way to get some, uh, I like to try to use basically Right off the bat, a three value, get your dark, your midtone, and your light. Then you can noodle all kinds of values in between that. But once you get that, and if it's working, it's going to work. And if it's not, then you need to adjust something. Sometimes what can happen also, like what's happening right here, is I decide, you know what, I don't think that uh, value of that shadow in the porch area is working enough, so I go back over it with a darker tone. And uh, then I'll pull out stuff later that you'll see as I try to bring out like the post a little bit just by wiping the paint away with a little terps. That's a very effective way. You won't get back to your uh, like a white because I'm painting on a, a grayish tone panel. I love that that uh, way of working and so it depends on what you're if you're working from a white panel you can pull it back down to white. One thing that's consistent about this whole process for me what I'm doing here is the paint is not thick. You don't want to be using thick paint at this stage. It may look thick when I put in dark marks, but it's really kind of just uh, very kind of light paint in a way. Uh, the lighter grays, I had a little more terps and that sort of uh, idea. Um, then you can easily, once you get values that you like, whatever color you put on there, as long as it's the right value, will work. 
few seconds here, I'm going to be starting in the background. And this was actually a lot of fun because I didn't really, I mean, yes, you're trying to make some tree shapes and certain maybe types of trees, but I wasn't super concerned. So it was fun having uh, sort of a few minutes of some abstract playtime to create some interest in the background. I mean, there was really some trees back there, but I wanted to really uh, accentuate what I needed to for the uh, subject matter of my building. So I didn't want to, maybe some of the trees were maybe not appealing enough, so I left those out. So I just wanted really dark shapes up against light shapes. To me, that technique really kind of accentuates uh, the realism in something, gives that pop and that contrast like if you're standing across a room and you see a painting. And I, I really enjoy using that to its full potential. Really, you know, if you think about it, th this stage of a painting is when you want to have fun. You want to get back to your eight-year-old self and, and in a way and just play and have fun. There's no commitment really at this stage. I mean, just go for it. And if you want to try like a shape of a tree or what, and it doesn't work out, buff it back out, put a little turp in there and wipe it out as much as you can and start over. I mean, this is where you can really get ideas and try to improve in your technique and how you might tackle subjects. So that's why I, I really encourage you. I mean, you can just go out, take a little pile of panels and do nothing but these little starts like this and learn quite a bit. One thing that I implore you not to do is to get lazy with parts of a, of a scene that you're trying to capture. If it's, say, buildings and you're not good at buildings, well, pay, you know, the only way through it is you have to observe, slow down, and practice, and do a lot of bad buildings. That's the only way you're going to improve. I think it can become a careful territory, special, uh, especially with plain air painting, uh, that the looseness, there is an effectiveness to the loose paint, loose uh, handling, but if you're not careful with the draftsmanship, it can just look like a hot mess, and that's what you got to try to avoid. And it's very prevalent out there, and I think it's uh, not a good thing. Let me know in the comments what you think of this whole kind of a uh, topic, but it's not like I'm trying to beat anyone down by by a long shot, but I'm just talking about if you're watching my videos, I assume you want to paint in a certain manner that might be somewhat realistic. I don't know. Let me know. Um, I tend to want to have things look like what I see in nature. I don't push uh, boundaries too much in terms of making it cartoonish or, you know, whatever. Okay, if you remember earlier in the painting process, this area I'm working on now, the angle of the shadow cast onto the barn was unequal when it, the object casting it is a constant straight line. So I'm adjusting that to, to uh, reflect that. And also there's a little bit also the garage door recesses back in a few inches. So that's angles you got to pay attention to in terms of of making sure it doesn't look like it's just pasted on the shadow, that it steps back into that a little bit. So play that back from the beginning, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now that I have everything else, the building shadows kind of end, now I'm working on the shadows on the ground, and you remember earlier the conversation, I'm trying to decipher exactly what's going on the right-hand side of the painting for the cast shadow. That I can work on as I study more uh, now that I have it home. Here I am now putting in the white paint and I'm trying a technique here I'd read about somewhere I can't remember where but it was interesting to me and I want to see uh, what it's going to do in the end result but a lot of times when I'm painting sunlight I've always put a little yellow in it and could you think in sunlight and all that and there was I don't know if it was a podcast or something but somebody said put some blue in it and that's what I did here and it can look kind of appealing now because it's just a, a value study in black and white basically but I'm curious when I get the uh, green grass and the actual local color of the objects if this technique is going to be effective for uh, suggesting sunlight so we'll find out and I'll have to uh, get back to you okay we're gonna be wrapping up this voiceover and I uh, hope you enjoyed it for people that have been watching my channel for quite a while uh, let me know in the comments for everybody new watching again uh, thanks and I invite you to subscribe and feel free to leave your comments or if you have more questions I would be happy to answer them uh, again value studies are the bomb values rule that's the bottom line of this video just love them and uh, 
They can really take you places and really make your painting sing. I highly recommend that you try them out. You will not be disappointed in your growth. So have fun. Okay, I'm about, uh, it's coming out pretty good for a little value study. I haven't been out painting in forever. So uh, it's about uh, probably 45 minutes into it. Let's take a look. Here's what we got going on so far. And I'm kind of liking the punch that it has. There's the seam. Can't complain, a lot of work still to do, but it's coming along. Okay, heading home, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the result, even though the painting's not finished. I will try to work on it at some other point, but I love the value tones that I got. It could have been finessed a little more, but it was pretty windy, and of course my battery was dying, and I have it plugged in now in my charger in my car. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked about getting back to some painting, some outdoor painting. And I gotta say, number one, I love painting structure. I love buildings and that sort of thing. Just love it. Let me know what you think of uh, this little quick study. Uh, I think it was probably about an hour, 10 minutes, maybe max, maybe. And uh, let me know what you think. Uh, really enjoy working that way. And I enjoyed working on the oil primed uh, panels and using the ivory black on the gray tone that I created on the panel. So that was pretty cool. So uh, almost home. Until the next video, I will see you later.